We had a good question from someone um, on another video asking what is a strike line. So there's another video that talks about strike lines and how to use them, uh, but I think we need a more foundational video about what a strike line is to begin with. So let's pretend that you live in, a, in an area that has a really great exposure um, of rock kind of like this, and let's say that you can drive all the way around it. So let's say you start over here in your car, and you're driving down the road and you notice that there is a contact. And let's say from where you're driving, it looks roughly horizontal, but it's up pretty high off the road. I'm gonna put um, an orange unit above the contact and I'll put a blue one below. Okay, so let's say this is the contact that you observe. You get out of your car right here, climb up this outcrop, and you record your elevation right at this point on the contact. And let's say that you record your elevation to be 500 meters above sea level, right? And then you climb back down and you keep driving. And when you get to this spot over here, you park again, climb up, and you get your altitude measurement right there on the contact. And let's say that again right here, you record an elevation of 500 meters. The line that connects this point to this point is a strike line for that contact. And the reason for that, and I'll sketch this in in just a minute, is that if we took a horizontal plane and we fit that horizontal plane to intersect with the contact between the orange unit and the blue unit, the horizontal plane would, would intersect along this line. Okay, So we call that the 500 meter strike line. And the direction of this would be strike. Okay. So let's say, um, we're going to visualize it a little bit more. Let's say we get back in our car and we drive from right here over to this corner. We're going to try driving down um, this route. And let's say that driving along this side of the road, we notice a similar contact. I mean, this time it's not as high up off the road. We can, we can reach it a little bit easier. Let's draw it right here. Okay. We're going to again put the blue unit below and we'll put the orange unit above. If I get out of my car and I climb up to this contact that's not as high up and I record my elevation, maybe I get 200 meters. And then let's say I drive down the road and I record my elevation here. And again, it's 200 meters. Makes sense. Driving along the road, that contact looks relatively horizontal. Now this would be the 200 meter strike line. All right. Now here's where the concept of um, apparent dip can come in. If you're looking at the contact between this unit on this side or this side, it's going to look like that unit is dipping zero degrees. Uh, but the reason for that is that at this point, you are looking parallel to dip. You're looking perpendicular to strike. And we need to be able to look and see dip just to help us visualize what's going on here with these units. So let's say you get back in your car, drive back around, and you park here. What you're going to see now is the true dip. Okay, you are going to see this side of the plane where you'll see the blue unit below and you'll see the orange unit above. sloppy.
Okay, so now if I'm thinking about this plane, this plane is the contact, what makes these lines strike lines is that now if I think about drawing my horizontal plane intersecting that contact, let's imagine we draw a horizontal plane where if I walked around on that plane, I always had an elevation of 500 meters above sea level. This 500 meter high horizontal plane intersects the surface at this line. So that is my 500 meter strike line. And the same thing happens down here. If I made a horizontal plane, and I let that horizontal plane intersect that orange-blue contact, then the 200 meter elevation plane would intersect at this line, making that the 200 meter strike line. And this is why strike lines are so useful for helping us find dip, because by definition, if we've got more than one, then we have two lines in a plane, and we can find the direction of dip by looking at the direction perpendicular to that line. That's the direction of dip. And we can find the amount of dip by looking at the, the horizontal distance between those two lines and the vertical distance between those two lines. So there's a triangle that lives right in here where the vertical edge of that triangle is here the difference between the 500 meter and 200 meter plane and the horizontal distance between those two strike lines is however far I drove in my car between these two points. So I'm just going to call that X. But we would have that information if we were out in the field or if we were looking at a map. So you can see how using a right triangle, and this is where that the other video takes off, using a right triangle, you'd have a distance of 300, a distance of how far you drove your car, and you could use your trig ratios to find your dip. All right, hopefully that didn't cut off the bottom. Okay, thank you.